My clothing brand, Alien Clothing, has something very special for you this Halloween. Do you remember our design, Ghost Boys? Well, starting today, we're selling a limited Halloween edition called Pumpkin Boys. You can only purchase this design up until November 1st, and then it'll be gone forever. Use code SPOOKY at checkout for 15% off your order. So if you want something over there, you should get it now. Thank you guys so much for supporting the brand. I really appreciate it. Now back to the video. Spooky, spooky skeleton. Dum, 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 dum. I had no choice but to make this video because the FBI asked me to. And I'm not about to say no to the feds, okay? I mean, there were these other people too, but do they matter? Nah. The Alpha Test is a 2020 horror film about a robot assistant that goes around killing everyone. Who could have saw that coming with a face like this? <laughs> now that is a sexy robot. <laughs> Who wouldn't want this thing around your house cleaning for you? It was written, directed, produced, shot, edited, and jizzed on by Aaron Murtis. I'm not sure if I pronounced his name right, but I don't care. This is the same guy who made the amazing movie Curse of the Nun. Remember when I covered Curse of the Nun in my video about the Nun movies? Yeah, that movie was pretty good. Keep your promise! I can't! Okay! Oh. <coughs> And I'm very excited to announce that this movie has some of the same actors from Curse of the Nun. So you know it's good. JD was right. Just a cold, unfeeling computer! Don't let me run. On one hand, I like the decision to make the robot kind of creepy looking. It lends itself pretty well to the ominous tone of the movie. But then again, if you think about it for more than two seconds, it starts to fall apart. Why would the designers make the robots look like this? Who the hell would purchase a home assistant that looks like this? Hello. Ah! A lot of people are already scared of introducing AI like this into their life. But yeah, if you make it look like this, <laughs> then I'm sure they'll be really open to the idea. <laughs> Is the black around the eyes really necessary? I guess making them look like 15 year old goth girls that just started using makeup is something you could do. Uh, I probably wouldn't have done that, but you know, you do you. I love how they don't even try to make the hands of the robot look like robot hands. <laughs> They're so clearly human hands. You can see the tendons. Are you telling me that the company put all of their effort into making the hands look like human hands, but they couldn't give less of a shit about the face? <laughs> they spent at least 10 years perfecting the hands, but by the time they got to the face, they were really worn out. So they're like, nah, just whatever, just throw something up there. <laughs> but make sure to give her eyeliner. That's really important. And the robot blinks throughout the entire movie. <laughs> what? Gotta keep those eyes hydrated, you know? When the robot blinks, it applies WD-40, so its eyes don't squeak when it <laughs> when it looks around. <laughs> and the mask that they gave the actress has like this open back half that shows a bunch of exposed mechanical parts. And I don't have a problem with this, but it's so clearly a poorly painted rubber part of the mask. This completely destroys the viewer's immersion. It's not a convincing robot in the slightest. She doesn't even move like a robot. And apparently this is the alpha, like the first version for the public. I don't think they definitively say that, but the movie is called The Alpha Test. This company did a fantastic job mimicking the movement and the hands of a human body, but just didn't really care about the rest. It still has a robotic sounding voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> because that would be the tough part, giving it a human sounding voice. That's the hard part. <laughs> At least they remember to give her tits. For a low budget movie, it's not a huge deal, but I mean, come on. It must not be that hard to create a convincing back portion to this mask. And why not give her gloves? That would solve the hand problem. All that aside, let's just get into this. So yeah, in this movie, there's this guy named JD. <laughs> his sister Lily, and their mom and dad. JD won a coding contest at his tech company, so his reward was a free alpha home assistant robot. Surprisingly, when they unveil the robot, the mother is the only person that is apprehensive about it. <laughs> Lily and their dad are both like, oh sweet, a robot. <laughs> Even though it looks creepy as shit. Have any of these people seen a sci-fi movie before? I didn't know it was possible to exist in a first world country and not have seen a movie about a destructive robot. But hey, I guess these people are fine with it. The dad is like, yeah, it'll clean the house. Let's fire our cleaning lady. She's a bitch. <laughs> and the way he says it, 
God. We have Mimi. Fire Mimi, she's a bitch. This guy, he acts like a 16 year old throughout the entire movie. Dude, that's awesome. Congrats, man. So yeah, this family just got a cleaning robot for free, which will do all the cleaning around the house for free. 24 seven, but for whatever reason, they decide not to fire the obsolete cleaning lady. And it's not just that her job is now obsolete. She's also a massive <laughs> So. <laughs> the fuck did you say? Give me a little shit. Like she bullies the robot in multiple scenes throughout the movie. And she's mean to the family too. Like why do they keep her around? They have a legit reason to fire her, but they just don't because the movie needs her to be around to like make the robot evil, you know? It's such a poor way to develop the plot, you know, because it doesn't make any sense. Especially since they talk about firing her, but they just don't because I guess they decided to not save money. When they first get the alpha, the dad says to the mom, You'll never know she's there. Are you kidding me? Look at that freakish thing. <laughs> How can you not notice this thing? <laughs> Apparently, the company gave these alpha robots the ability to learn and process emotions. She's designed to feel bad whenever she does something wrong. It motivates her to learn. I don't know why the designers would ever give this home assistant the ability to become angry or sad. That just seems like you're asking for a catastrophe to happen. And there doesn't really seem to be any benefit to that. But according to JD, they did this on purpose so they can learn from their mistakes. What? Isn't that what software updates are for? If a machine makes a mistake, then just update the software so it no longer makes that mistake. Allowing the machine to feel certain things is a terrible idea. How can you possibly code a robot and not see that emotion would be a massive hindrance to it? JD's sister Lily in this movie doesn't have many friends and her dad is mean to her and apparently she gets bullied at school. So she forms a bond with the robot. JD gets all upset with her. He says over and over, it's not a person, it's just a machine. And he knows that the machine can learn and process emotion. I'm just kidding. I'm trying to tell jokes like JD. Like JD knows that the alpha is emotionally processing this information like a human being would. So why would he openly degrade its existence? The only person with any sense in this movie is the mother. She tries to sever any sort of emotional connection between the family and the robot by putting the robot into the barn. But of course, by the time she does this, Lily and the robot have already formed a connection, so it's too late. But Lily nudes me. Lily is not the brightest person on earth. She forms a pact with this very scary looking machine that neither of them will let people bully them anymore. I won't let Mimi bully me in the future. Good. That's a responsible thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, as the movie progresses, the cleaning lady is increasingly mean to the alpha. Fuck off. Because she feels like she's being replaced, which she is, when the family just forgot to fire her for whatever reason. While the robot is giving the dad a foot rub, the dad's watching a movie and he points out a really gory scene to JD and the alpha sees this and it's like, oh, so that's how humans work. And I guess it learned how to kill people. JD knows how this robot works and he's in the room and he can see the robot watching the TV. How does he not see a problem with this? So yeah, the alpha ends up killing the maid. I finally got a better job. Fuck you, I quit. One of the most important plot devices in this movie is a beer bottle. And I'm not joking. It's so dumb. When they first get the robot, the dad asks the robot to open a beer bottle by using the side of a table and like popping it off that way by slamming it down. Seriously, this is a very important plot device. <laughs> and of course the alpha doesn't know how to do this. So it just breaks the bottle and they're all surprised, you know, like, oh my God, I really thought this robot would have this meaningless, useless skill. <laughs> And then he asks the Alpha to do it again later on when he's watching the movie. And obviously it failed the first time, so it's gonna fail this time too. <laughs> it's not like it was practicing. So obviously it fails again. <laughs> and he's like, oh my God, I can't believe it. This robot is useless. It can't do the stupid party trick that I want it to do. So JD wastes his time and programs the robot to be able to do this. Later, the dad brings the Alpha to a liquor store for whatever reason. You know, like when you're shopping for booze and you want to bring your robot friend with you. <laughs> and there's this other guy there with his alpha. I guess they're all over the place now. That's weird. Everyone's buying these creepy ass robots. That makes sense. So the dad, you know, being a 16 year old. Here, alpha, show him the trick. Oh, that's fine, really. <laughs> no, no, really, it's good. You're gonna like it. He's trying to show off his alpha. 
The Alpha refuses because it made a pact with Lily to not be pushed around or bullied. So the Alpha and the dad get in a big fight, and I bet you won't guess how the Alpha kills the dad later. Yep, with a broken beer bottle. <laughs> the characters learn that the Alpha is weak to water. The mother thinks it's a brilliant idea to trick the Alpha into like walking to a lake with her so she can push the Alpha into the lake and kill it. Wouldn't it be much easier just to get like a glass of water, go up to the Alpha and be like, hey, I think there's a bug on your back. Let me get this for you. And then just pour the water down its head. <laughs> Boom, it's done for. The Alpha has ADHD or something, and it's like, oh, what's in the barn? I want to see the horses. Why does this robot have desires? <laughs> it's so stupid. So the mother and the Alpha are in this barn. She shoots the Alpha, and it flops over for some reason. It should immediately try and stand back up again, right? It's a machine. It doesn't have vital organs or anything. <laughs> but yeah, it just lays there for some reason. Maybe it's playing dead. Who knows? For whatever reason, the mom doesn't keep shooting it when it's laying there. She kind of just runs around and freaks out. The robot wakes up randomly and attacks her. The mother escapes the robot. They find their way back to the house and she hides in a running shower. The robot comes in and she just kind of like sits there. You have like shampoo and stuff, right? Just take whatever you can and start like squirting it at the robot. <laughs> Some of it will get in its head, I'm sure. But yeah, the alpha just throws a bunch of random stuff at her before pulling her out and jamming a crowbar into her. <laughs> When Lily finally comes to her senses and finds out that the Alpha is actually a machine and is killing people, she's like, I don't want to be your friend anymore. We're not friends. You're evil. So she runs away and jumps in the pool. So Lily's in the pool, just, you know, chilling. And the robot comes out with a gun and starts shooting at her. Lily dives into the water so the bullets can't reach her. And then, like a complete moron, she swims up to the robot. So the robot just bonks her head onto the side of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Miraculously, the robot got Lily out of the pool. Like, what did it use? One of those pool net things that you get bugs out with? <laughs> and stabbed a note in her hands that said friends forever that Lily drew before. Because their friendship is over. They're no longer friends. Oh yeah, and the Alpha has a six shooter, but it shoots nine times at Lily in the pool. <laughs> And that's ignoring the fact that the gun had been used twice before, once by the dad and once by the mother, and it was never reloaded. So unless this revolver can hold 11 shots, <laughs> the robot has JD tied up in a bathtub. The daughter kills the alpha while it's distracted with JD by dumping water on it and putting it in the shower, which anybody could have done very easily, but I guess they just didn't think about doing that until just now. Oh yeah, and then she slams its head in a door as it's like crawling away, and I guess that kills it, because that makes sense. <laughs> you know when you slam like a titanium head in a door and how that can really do some damage? <laughs> <laughs> JD and Lily exit the house to find a bunch of other alphas just roaming around. One has a shotgun and it kills them both. Yeah, apparently the dumbass company that made these robots made it so they all shared like the same memory in a cloud. That's a great idea when you give them all emotion and free will. <laughs> I can hardly see how this will backfire. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in a sci-fi, I think ever. It's like, this is the dumbest sci-fi I've ever seen in my life. Remember the movie Replicas with Keanu Reeves? Yeah, I like that more. <laughs> and I mean, come on, if you're gonna make a robot into like your dream goth GF, then at least give her a black wig and big tits. Jeez, what were these people thinking? At least nobody tried to fuck it in this movie. That's one thing I can be thankful for. You know what kind of machine doesn't dress like a goth tries to kill you, but also sounds great? Yeah, you guessed it. This video is sponsored by Raycon. I've been using Raycon's new everyday E25s for months now. And it's not just because they've been a generous sponsor of my channel. I genuinely really like them. They have a great noise isolating fit. They have six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing. They're half the price of other premium audio brands and they don't hurt my ears while I'm wearing them. They're just a really great choice for earbuds. So if you haven't picked up one of these already, go to buyraycon.com slash Alien to save 15% off your order. And thank you so much Raycon for sponsoring this video. I really, really appreciate it. So yeah, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching.
If you have any recommendations for a movie I should cover, please put it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to visit AlienClothing.com. I'm so proud of the company right now, and I can only thank you guys for that. So thank you so much. That's gonna do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.